So I've made some mistakes and I would like to share some of these mistakes with you so that maybe it will help you to avoid them. In late 2021, early 2022, I'd set a goal to run a 5K in 18 minutes. Not an easy task, but I'd been training a lot and I was feeling pretty confident. The thing about this goal is that it was a results-based goal, the type of goal that I don't have any control over. Soon after setting this goal, I ran a 5K in 23 minutes and 32 seconds, which was and currently still is my PR. And this is actually a good time, especially for a guy my size. But I didn't feel good about it. I felt disappointed. The crazy thing is, I was actually in great shape, and based on the average 5K time for my age group, I was actually well above average. But I had a hard time appreciating that and the progress that I had made over the years leading up to that. I started to run less and less, and eventually I completely fell out of the habit of running altogether. And after several months, I had lost a lot of that progress that I had made over the previous couple of years. If I had kept running consistently from that time until now, not only would I be in better shape now, but I very well might have run that sub 18 minute 5K or at least gotten pretty close to it. But unfortunately, I made mistake number one, which was focusing more on the end result than the process. This led to not enjoying the process as much and forgetting the importance of sticking to that process. Now, I shared in my most recent video that back in 2020, as the pandemic was starting, I was just ending a full time four year career as a rideshare driver. And while that was happening, Destiny gave me a shot at a more fulfilling career type and lifestyle that I wanted. Not that driving for rideshare wasn't actually kind of fun sometimes, but realistically, there wasn't much of a future in that career. For the first time in my life, I had enough money to invest in creative tools that I previously could never afford. Soon after that, I went to Ukraine and had a great experience. Then I came back home because one of my grandmothers was nearing the end of her life and I wanted to spend some time with her before she passed. After she passed away, I flew back to Ukraine, stayed for about a month, and then I spent six weeks in Poland. All the while, I was trying to consistently upload videos that documented this traveling experience. And in February of 2022, when I came back home again, I tasted a little bit of success. One of my videos about traveling through Poland caught on and it shot up to about 30,000 views within a month. Now this was a pleasant surprise. It was really nice to see my work getting recognized and it seemed like this channel might have a breakthrough. But the next video which I posted, which I ended up taking down, completely tanked. It was getting hardly any views and a lot of the new subscribers that I just gained from the successful video about Poland unsubscribed. I think that that damaged my confidence and that partly manifested in me only posting four more YouTube videos for the entire remainder of 2022, which is of course way too little to be posting if you wanna actually take YouTube seriously. But I'd lost a little bit of my nerve because I just had a video that did so well and then my next video performed so poorly. I was afraid of making another video that would perform badly. And I was feeling so much pressure to make another video that would somehow reach 30,000 views. So I got stuck and I developed an inner conflict about what niche my videos should be in, what direction should I take this channel, what am I doing, where should I go from here? And I was suddenly feeling quite insecure and was unsure about my video making process. All this was due to making mistake number one again and now mistake number two, overthinking and not taking enough action. I got stuck in this vicious cycle of thinking and then rethinking and procrastinating and simultaneously feeling guilty about the fact that I was procrastinating and also feeling that it was too late to restart, which would lead to continued procrastinating. And then a few months would go by and I would still feel guilty about the fact that I hadn't posted much, which would lead to me continuing to feel like it was too late, which would lead to me continuing to not take action and procrastinate more. There's this saying, you know, that fatigue makes cowards of us all. I would add to that that overthinking makes cowards of us all. At least it did for me. So then came the end of 2022. At this point, I had lost so much momentum and I was feeling so much stress and so much guilt. I felt like I should be doing better than I was. You know, my plan and vision for this channel and my life at that point was starting to look a little bit dim. And all the money that I had had saved up, a lot of which I was living off of, was beginning to run low. So I started working a couple side hustles, started dabbling with Uber and Lyft again, uh, started doing some independent contracting work with Amazon. Now, I'm of the opinion that the average nine to five job here in California does not pay enough 
to keep up with the cost of living. And I don't mean living an extravagant and luxurious lifestyle. I just mean living a very basic, simple lifestyle. Even that has become so expensive for so many Californians at this time. It's almost like you have to have a side hustle or multiple side hustles along with your full-time job just to keep up with the bills. And it feels like an unwinnable rat race, especially with the recession that we're currently in and all the inflation and all that. For a long time, my goal has been to escape this. So by the time it was 2023, I could feel myself totally getting restuck in this rat race. And I just recently tasted what it was like to escape this. So to go from that to being stuck here again, was disappointing to say the least. You know, I'd built up so much determination in my mind to not let that happen. I tried to maintain a positive attitude, stay calm, but I could feel myself beginning to get stressed out. So it was time to make a choice. Either I was going to get a nine to five while continuing to work my side hustles, or I would just continue the side hustles by themselves, which would mean that I would only be able to afford to live in my car, or I would just continue the side hustles and maybe get a loan or a credit card. So I didn't like option one because I felt that that essentially would be giving up on the dream, if you will. I'd be giving up on building the life that I wanted. And I thought I would just get re-entangled in the unwinnable rat race. Of course, I avoided option two because I didn't really want to live in my car. And so then there was option three. Option three seemed a bit risky, but I figured at least it would give me the power to continue renting the cheapest Airbnbs that I could find and continue to work my side hustles. And I figured that I would continue to make content and continue to figure things out. I just recently started doing some freelance editing work and had recently finished a certification program to teach English abroad. So I thought surely something would work out. So I went with option three and I got approved for two, actually three credit cards. This would eventually become mistake number three, which was over leveraging myself, which is a fancy way of saying I took on too much debt. Now, at first, things seemed pretty good. You know, it seemed like I'd made the right decision. Getting approved for those credit cards had bought me a little more time, gave me a cushion, and it allowed me to continue to try and work on this channel and my other side projects. And I continued to work my side hustles. And although I still just couldn't be consistent enough, I did continue to upload some content to this channel when I could. And I'd actually had the good fortune of starting to do some freelance editing work for someone that I consider to be a mentor figure. And I thought that maybe that would end up turning into uh, steady work. And as I previously mentioned, I had gotten certified uh, to be an English teacher through this program. And so I thought, cool, I'm going to probably do some freelance editing work and it's gonna become a steady thing. And probably I'll also become an English teacher and teach English abroad or online or something like that. It turned out that my editing services at that time weren't gonna be needed as much as I thought they would be. And I also had a really hard time finding legit English job opportunities. Turns out that if you have the certification but you don't, have a bachelor's degree as well, which I don't, uh, it can be very difficult to get hired. So neither of those things worked out. And now it seemed like the decision that I had made, the, the bet that I had made might not work. Now I've been budgeting as best I could. I was still working my side hustles and I was, I was spending as slowly as possible, as little as possible. But after about six months, the credit cards were maxed out and now I had all this new debt to deal with and I still hadn't established a steady career. I knew this was at least partly due to mistake number one and two, which contributed to mistake number three and now led to mistake number four, pursuing too many things at once. There's this quote by Confucius, I think, that says, the man who chases two rabbits catches neither. And I realize now that I wasn't chasing just two rabbits. It had got to the point where I was chasing at least four. I had been trying to continue to make content for this YouTube channel. Uh, I was still working those side hustles. I was working on the English teaching certification program and was then constantly trying to find a legitimate job with that certification, which I ended up not finding. At that time, I was even trying to start a successful e-commerce business. You know, and then there was my, you know, my spiritual practice and other good habits that I was trying to hold on to. There just wasn't enough time to do it all. Yeah, so because I was chasing too many goals at once, I predictably didn't get very far with any of them. So I was now gonna have to make another choice. I figured I had two options now. One was gonna get that nine to five, 
and continue to work my side hustles, which again would have meant 60 to 70 hour work weeks, enough money to just pay the bills probably, uh, but no time, no energy left to work on anything else. Or two, just keep doing the side hustles by themselves, suck it up and live in my car, and gradually repay the debts with the side hustle money and try to keep working towards my other goals. I chose option two because, as I mentioned before, I didn't see a future in any of the jobs that were available to me, and I was afraid that I would just end up getting stuck. I figured with option two, at least there would still be time for me to continue to try to build a better life in my spare time. So I spent the latter half of 2023 living in my car. I told myself that this was just the price that I would have to pay to hopefully eventually build the life that I actually wanted and be able to have it in a permanent way. And I don't think I was entirely wrong about that, right? There are many successful people who have had to endure a lot of failure and a lot of hardship on the way to their success. And sometimes it takes longer than you expected for things to work out, especially if you make some of the mistakes that I was making. So I figured I would just weather the storm. And I was okay for a while, but I probably waited too long to ask for help. And that was mistake number five, waiting too long to ask for help. I probably could have and probably should have reached out to more people during some of my darkest moments during this period, not to ask for money, but just for moral support, just to have somebody to talk to. I think this could have made things a lot less painful and lonely. You know, expressing what I was going through to somebody who, who understood could have potentially taken the edge off. I don't know for sure, but I do know that I didn't really ask for help and didn't open up about this much because I was embarrassed about my situation. So eventually, destiny kind of forced me to ask for help. I got pretty sick. All the stress and all the ups and downs from that past year, including being basically homeless, had finally started to get to me, it started to manifest in my physical health. And you know, after going through all of this, I was reminded of uh, two things. One is that whether I actually ever achieve the desired outcomes that I want is neither in my control nor is it the most important thing. And two, losing or not getting the desired result doesn't make me a failure. As long as I keep trying, as long as I don't give up. I've realized I need to remember to just focus on effort, do my best, and let God do the rest. And I hope that you don't give up. I hope that you continue to try and achieve whatever that goal is that you're trying to achieve. And I hope that you don't make the same mistakes that I made. And if you did or you do, that's okay, because we're gonna make mistakes and sometimes that's required for us to learn and grow.